Previously, on the AO3 garage, we thought about installing subwoofers. This is that video. I want to install subwoofers in my truck. Ooh, speakers and amp. You can tell these have been here a while. How I'd like things to happen when you order parts online. I didn't pay that much. How parts online actually show up. Ding. Oh, so my gra graffiti my uh, mailbox. Okay, I never remember what this is. Oh, not it. Oh, that's not it. Oh, that's it. Huh. <laughs> ah, time to go to the post office. Back from the post office. Nope. Always positive here. It says, can you bring it? Back to the The girls at the post office always get a kick out of a gift for Michael Badass Born. Fragile. Handle care. Ooh. A friend of mine was like, make sure you grab it in a blanket. It's raining outside. Stay tuned, boys and girls. We're going to be installing this in the next couple of days. There's some boom in the truck. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Now, on with the show. Hey, guys. Welcome back or to the channel. This is 803 Garage. And today, we're going to start the installation of our car stereo working off the stock head unit. Now, how do we do this? Well, I have a little adapter, it's only 20 bucks, so it may or may not work. We'll start with that, then we'll go to the wiring, and then we'll go to what the amp is, and then we'll go to what the sub is. Now, the amp, I only paid two thirds of what, actually half of what it actually costs. I got it for around 200 bucks, shipping included, and then it was relisted, like newer one, like new ones. Um, this one is a new one, but like, it. it Anyways, I digress. Um, for 470 something, I'm just like, holy. So I got a smoking deal on this. I think somebody uh, might have got fired over this for this deal. We'll get that in a second. So when you guys got a stock head unit and you want to keep it, these days they don't really have any pre outs. So you have to get one of these adapters. Now, some amps actually have this built in, the one I have does not. These are where speaker wires come in. So it goes high in for low out, up to 80 watts. On the channel so if you have a stock head unit it's not going to produce more than 80 watts on the channels that's your neutral that's your battery always power then on this side of it we have um well actually you have adjustments right there there's a little handy dandy uh screwdriver it all, it's all plastic then you got your remote line to turn the amp on and then obviously your rca is out next this is not this is irrelevant this is for when you have led lights i was going to steal the t-taps from this um, and the, the reason why this is, this is resistors for LED lights. Um, these are insulators for your wires so that you don't, they don't, uh, when you're installing them, the wires are, they stay inside these little um, cylinders instead of just going ping all over the place and creating a short. We'll get to that maybe later. Um, this is a distribution block. It's not going to be used for this one, but I'm going to use it for my truck. Again, I only paid 20 bucks for this. It's pretty daggone cheap and pretty awesome. It's got little LED lights that light up when the fuses are working. They go out when the fuses are blown. Um, this is your power wire, nice and thick. It might not be actual four gauge, you know how it is these days. And this is the uh, deoxygenated uh, copper wire. So that's why it's silver, it looks kind of aluminum. Uh, we've got our extra speaker wire, our RCA, our remote wire. It does come with uh, a power wire. And again, that's really, really daggone cheap, or sorry, short. Um, this little beast here actually comes with a remote. I don't sure if I'll use that, but I'll plug it in and see how well it works. And one of the other things I got, this one I paid $25 for, is a fuse box. I don't know how, um, how good this is. It bought it off Amazon and it's 150 amps. Um, the reason why I chose this one as opposed to like say like a one that's 100 amps or whatever like that because my stereo subwoofer amp um is around uh what well, says 3000 peak 1500 R, uh, rms and that's the real wattage you want to work on um that was most of my garage door light going off and uh that'll be right within where the range i wanted in and this protects your wiring and your system from burning down because you connect this right up to where the battery is I got two of them because they were on sale and if you look closely you'll see that this stuff is old. So, well, the other one had this integrating plastic. This one actually looks pretty decent. Anyways, before I start to digress, this is what uh, what I got. And I'm just going to put this on the ground so I don't knock it over. This amp 
retails for about 475 on Amazon. I got it for two, a little, just a little bit over two. Oh, sorry, just fell over. And this is the beauty. She's huge. Um, that's the, uh, the line in, or sorry, that's the remote. That's the remote. And that's all that they give you. This is a no nonsense amplifier. You've got your pre ins, um, some adjustments. You can tell it's serious because you've got three freaking fuses. Like, now let's go over to where the sub is. This is the sub. Apparently, this is 1800 watts. Um, I didn't see any ratings on it. I know it's 2 ohm because it says it's 2 ohm right there. And no, I haven't cleaned up my tools since I was working on the uh, John Deere tractor. Have not found a hood for it yet. I could get an all brand new one for 500 bucks, but it's not worth it, so I'm not doing it. Um, what my idea is to make a rat rod grill and hood, or find like an old grill or somewhere, made it on, do some steel work or whatever. I wanna put some LED lights going across the top so I can actually see when I'm snow blowing. And yeah, that's it, kind of boring. I quickly digress, but I don't see any ratings on this thing. So I'm just going off of memory, and memory isn't that good, but I could look up the specs, might do that later. But this thing, as you can tell, just me tapping on that, this thing was built for thunder. Sorry, I had to. Love this sub. I got this in high school. I was gonna sell it. My nephew got in the way of that and bought it from me. So I didn't sell it to a stranger so he could keep it. And he rocked it for a while. Um, not sure what the, what happened to the amp that he had, but that doesn't really matter. We've got one for us that's gonna kick a lot of butt. Now, before I get further into this, you might be like, where's your capacitor? I'm like, the system won't be pushed that far. Anything under a thousand watts doesn't need a capacitor. Obviously I had a capacitor in the back, or in, in uh, what do you call it, previous years. Because I was rocking um, an 1800 watt sub. Um, the other thing you can do if you want something really good is for your system, because the capacitor stops the flats. So if, like when your system is really taxed, like the heavy, heavy base, it'll just drop right out and the base won't be as crisp as it could be. Um, again, the reason for that is because load. Your alternator can only do so much, your battery can only do so much, and it's a lot of stress on the system. If you have a capacitor, it takes the stress off the system. Now, if you have a super capacitor, or super cap, I should say, you have like six capacitors in one unit. Basically, it's like a super powerful battery, kind of scary, because capacitors themselves are kind of scary because they have all this energy, all this pent up aggression, if you will, and just want to let it out. That's why it's good for your system. Um, and it just takes all the flats out of the system so nothing just goes right, this doesn't dive right down. So your voltage stays constant. You get so you keep that 14.4 voltage or 13.8 or whatever it is, it won't just drop right out. And that's the reason why we have capacitors or super caps. Um, so I'm gonna start to get to installing this. Well, I'll have to just drop that in. I have a regular cap truck, so you're gonna see how tight this is. This is gonna take the place of the armrest. And then the amp is gonna be put on the floor. It's not really the ideal install, but it's only temporary. Cause I just wanna like put this in, show the guys what I used to have, what I used to play with and all the fun that uh, was, that came along with it. Anyways, let's go to that. So if you guys are wondering how big these subs are, I told you they're gonna be my armrest. This is only a temporary setup. I'm gonna go on to the other side. Get connected up to, as I said, two ohms. That amp is fully two ohms compatible up to, I think it's 1500 watts at two ohms RMS. And then there's your subs. We're gonna, we're gonna clean these off. That one looks like it's been worn by something. Anyways, that's how much dust is on these things. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna rock these for a couple days jingle some bells you know it's christmas time so this was part one part two we'll be hooking up running the power wires and then actually showing off what these subs can do i'll be wearing hearing protection just so y'all know because these things are bloody well loud and being in that enclosed space is not good so i might just wear earmuffs plus the earplugs so earplugs plus the muffs in that order and that way i can protect my hearing can't wait Anyways, guys, I will catch you all in the next one because I got to run off to work. Got to go. Can't, can't, can't keep playing. I, 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 wa I want to play. I want to play, but I can't. So I, I, I need to go work so I can, then I can play afterwards. Please like, share, and subscribe. You know all that stuff. Oh, I totally want to play. Anyways.
Peace.